uh, this is so this uh, so is the team shit or do we need one goal scorer because we create so much your logic is ridiculous it's a bit of both the team is shit and you need a goal scorer because there is no way you look there is no human being on god's green earth that's going to look look at this current chelsea side and think 1 billion there is no one that's look at real madrid starting 11 how much they cost Real Madrid starting 11, you could recognize, okay, there's a couple of hundred million pound players in here. Vinicius, Bellingham, Camavinga, Shuamani. You you get it, you understand it, you understand where they're going with this. Same even with Barcelona. I know they have a little bit more turmoil, but you see what happens at Barcelona, for example, the likes of Pedri, you know, you like you understand what's happening. With Chelsea, they see they literally have zero stars in that whole team. They're playing Enzo 10 one week, DM the next week. You're telling me that's a club that has no idea what they're doing? Yes. And do you have a goal scoring problems? Absolutely. Absolutely, you have a goal scoring problem. I hear you on that. Viewers, make sure you're smashing like buttons for us, please. Let's get this to a thousand likes whilst we are live. Chi cases, Terry, Don, uh, how long do you give managers before you sack them? Because I'm a firm believer in three strike rule. Uh, but that just that's just me. Also, uh, who says you can't follow the sacking model? That's a great, great question, Chika. You know who says you can't follow the sacking model? The age of your players. That's who says you can't follow the sacking model. Because by definition, you have no current stars. Every single one of them needs development. And this team is built because of their age. This is not me, this reality. Because of their age, they're built to win three years from now. Four years from now. Not now. So because they're built to win three, four years from now, you can't be expecting shit this season. And that's been the whole point. And if you're talking about three strikes, so you're saying essentially... You lost to West Ham. You lost to Forest. Are you saying if you lose next game against Bournemouth, that's three strikes? Because if that's how you're looking at it, then it's going to be a long day for you. So when you I, sign the likes of Cole Palmer, you'll sign the likes of Caicedo, the likes of Enzo, and like De Sassi and blah, blah, blah. Does that sound like a team that's trying to win now? Or does that sound like a team that's trying to win three years from now? I think it, 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 the, the manager they chose and the players you choose answers your question. It's a great... It's, Chica is actually a City fan, to be fair, but it's a great point. You have to look at the contextual situation. And that's why you can't have one size fits all. Example being, Sam will back me on this. He was in the spaces and on shows. The reason I wasn't an advocate of sacking Oli was not because I thought he was brilliant. I said, I don't think he's an elite level manager. And I didn't believe he would ever win us a major trophy. My rationale for not wanting him to be sacked was just, I didn't trust that the club would continue with the project he'd started in terms of, we're not going to have to do a squad overhaul. We're going to bring in a manager that can make this group world class. And we didn't. We went away and we were trying to rip it all apart again and rebuild. And the reason I don't want that is nothing to do with the manager. It's because I don't trust my owners to ever complete a rebuild. And I don't trust them to, to do it for Ten Hag either in, in, to, to its nth degree. With Chelsea, well, I'm not going to repeat what Hussam said is right. You can't, how the sacking model doesn't work with a squad like Chelsea's because it isn't a developed squad. It isn't a squad full of world-class stars with a world-class core that's used to winning. It's a team that needs someone and the same person and the same coaches for a couple of years, developing and nurturing them to that next level. So you can't... The sacking model, for instance, works at a club run as brilliantly as well and with a financial monopoly in its country as, uh, as Bayern Munich. It would work right now at Liverpool, sorry, at Liverpool, it would also work, not so much at Liverpool right now, I mean City, it would actually work right now at Arsenal because I think they've built something. The only, th the question marks over Arsenal, are, are they going to continue with this style of play and profile of player with a new manager? If they don't and they're going to do new, another rebuild, then sacking manager starts to become irrelevant. So it depends on the club, the age of the squad and what they're trying to achieve. In terms of the three strike rule, I've heard a lot of this. People go three strikes, five strike rule. Well, I need to understand what you get a strike for, Chike. Yes. Because... I feel like this free strike rule, it's okay. So if you're free strikes, whatever your re rationale is, but what if in amongst those three strikes being made, your club wins Premier Leagues and Champions Leagues? Does that take strikes off? Do you keep the, the, like, I don't understand the free strike rule. It's too vague. But people, what I've noticed on social media, and I'm not saying you, GK, but I've seen people in general, is they love ambiguity. They love things to be open to multiple interpretations. That way they can never be held. To a, to a, the irony is the same people that say we've got to hold people to account. They never want to give a straight answer so they so they can be held to account. They want it to be open-ended. So they say three strike rule. Break down what a strike is. They won't really want to tell you. 
because that way you, have, you can hold them to it. If they just say, I'm counting this one this weekend as a strike and this one's actually a strike, well, you can just, that, that, that's willy-nilly. That should not be how it is. But yeah, I, I get where you're coming from. But yeah, you've got to be balanced in my view, uh, in my in my opinion. Old German's back. He says, nah, if you were very, very sure about Arsenal winning the league, you would just take the bet. No, but that's a dumb point. That's like saying, oh, Terry, I'm going to make a bet with you for like 300 pounds. Like what? That's not what the channel's worth, my brother. That's not how life works. I wouldn't sell you my house for two grand just because I'm sure of something. Come on, man. Man said 5,000. Are you mad? Uh, this guy just made a speech copying what R9 says. Listen to him. I don't, I don't know. If, I don't never R9 speak English, to be fair, but I mean that in a nice way. Um, again, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Chica says, what I mean is that you give a manager three years and if they don't win a title within three years, you sack him. Sorry for the... It's not, it's not confusion. Again, so you say, okay, so each season's a strike. Um, yeah, I, I think that's fair. I but it depends what they do in the season. So if Poch... I, we're talking about Chelsea. If Poch finishes third, for example, and wins the FA Cup, you can't count it as a strike just because they didn't win the league. Yeah. This, in and context, is a fantastic season for Chelsea. And maybe Chike means title, just means any, any trophy that year. I think you also have to factor in what they inherited, what they yeah. took over. Who, also, who else is in the league? So a lot of people look at Ten Hag and go, he's had a £380 million to spend. He should be winning the league. But three teams in the league have spent more than him in that time. Two others have spent about the same amount as him. And they were all ahead of him when he took over. So you have to... You know, if I was if I was sponsored as an Olympic runner and they're saying you've got to improve your time this year by two seconds, not 100 meter sprint. They say I'm doing 1500, 800 meters, and they say you've got to improve by at least two seconds because I came eighth at the World Championships. They say I improve by three seconds, but I still come eighth because all the other people have improved as well. That doesn't mean I haven't got better. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes you have to contextualize the situation that you're in. If people that are better than you also get better, <laughs> you have to review the situation. In my now, you still might get sacked because maybe one of those better managers from one of those teams is now available and you can bring him in. That's fair. But you have to look at the, the land, the landscape that's out there. I don't think it's as simple as just, well, if you don't win in three years, sack him. You know, what if you do three narrow, very narrow title races where you're, where you're getting high 90 points and you're just missing out? I, I get the argument that a new manager might get you over the line. But you could also argue a new manager comes in and upsets the apple cart and you go backwards slightly. You have to... I just don't think there's one size fits all, Chike. Although you should be aiming to win these trophies. Um, it's just... It, I just think it's too hard to put a blanket statement across it, in my personal opinion. Uh, Terry and I have had the richest team in the world now, but we don't, do we? We've spent the most amount of money, but in my opinion, if you're telling me our squad's more valuable than everybody else's, you're lying to yourself. This is this is where rivals, again, you talk out of both sides of your mouths. You'll say your club buys crap players, you built a rubbish squad, you overspend, but then equally say you spent the most amount of money, so this squad should win. Those two are competing ideas that contradict one another. We have, and ironically, you also then say to us, "How? Why would you want the Glazers out when they spent that amount of money?" At the same time, you say that we waste money and we've built a crap. The owners have built a crap squad. <laughs> you see, speaking out of both sides of your mouth, it makes no sense. We have spent more money than anybody else in the last decade. We know that. That's why we want our owners gone because the, between them and their ball, they have mismanaged our money. Simple and straightforward as that. So, yeah, we have the most. We don't have the most valuable squad. You know, value what you spent and the value of that squad are completely different factors, in my opinion. But there we go. If you spend wisely, yes. And then we moan about our owners not spending wisely and not having the right board and recruiters in place to complement the management to make the right purchases at the right price. And then you say we're spoiled brats. It doesn't make sense. But that's what I said earlier. Be wary of what rivals say about your club. All they ever want to do is make it look bad. You know, and I can I, I definitely criticize all your clubs at times. But you all know how, how unbiased I am when your club's doing good things. And I don't just say it's bad because you're a rival. When you do good, I say it's good. When it's bad, I say it's bad. When it comes to Man United, you will literally criticize us on the same subject for both ends of the spectrum. <laughs> so, so there is no right or wrong answer. It's crazy. How do you hate your owners with how much money they spend? And then the next day you say, look how much money they've wasted on that shit squad. <laughs> it's, it's just so terrible. Um, here we go again, Mr. Hindsight. But it's 
we, we, we're talking about what we have spent. So again, twisted. If people say, Terry, look how much you spent in the last five years, that's hindsight. <laughs> it's all in the past. How am I not meant to use hindsight when talking about history? <laughs> Tell me how you speak about history without using hindsight, you moron. <laughs> Uh, Terry, after Nottingham Forest games, booze in the stadium uh, after 90 minutes. Chelsea's owners attend these games. They can hear it. They will pull the plug. Agreed. Oh, yeah. Agreed. Oh, no, oh, I agree with that as well. Uh, you think that they hear all these booze around Stamford Bridge. They, you can't tell me they will have no reaction. Mm. Uh, someone here says, Terry, you're confusing most richest with most valuable. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm doing the opposite. I'm literally not confusing the two. People are conflating them as, as very, very different things. Uh, Terry, you hate City. But again, they're my rival. But I call you the best team in the world. I praise how well you're run. I'd never call your manager a checkbook manager. Uh, I'd never turn around and call you a plastic club. I never turn. I, there's so much about you are a club and Pep's a checkbook manager. How and I know that? you say that, but this is the point. You say I hate them, and I do. I hate Liverpool, but I praise good things they do. There was a two-year period where I consistently referred to Liverpool as the best team in the world. It's because I'm unbiased, even though I don't like you because I'm a Man United fan. You know, it's as simple as that. I don't understand what what the confusion is with these things. Terry, excuses, excuses. What excuse am I giving? Like I don't understand. What so what is have we built a brilliant squad with that money? Like, what explain to me what excuse I'm giving and what it's for? What have I said that's an excuse? Uh, Terry, the numbers are there, bro. United have the most expensive squad. What I have not dis disagreed I think they're with... talking about the Sky Sports article. Yeah, we've saying. spent the most amount of money, I think, in the last five, six years on our squad, but it's not the most valuable, and equally. I, we've wasted a lot of that money on a squad that isn't good enough. But whenever I criticize the, the owner's spending, they say you can't blame the owners. They say they invest money. And then Sean, in the other side of rival fans' mouths, they'll laugh at how bad the squad is and how pathetically built it is. But then tell me I should be happy with spending that money on a squad that they say isn't good enough. Tell me how that makes any logical sense. So again, when everyone's saying excuses, what excuses am I giving? <laughs> what? What's the excuses? I'm admitting we've bought badly. Why is that? Why is that an excuse, Sam? I think, look, from Man United's perspective, there needs to be improvement. There needs to be stuff like that. But right now, look, there's the problem is Man United. Just like I've kept the same energy for my own club because I think we have had with similarities this summer. The blame cannot lie at one person's feet. There needs to be blame Ten Hag's door, Glazer's door recruitment door everyone everyone needs to hold accountability same thing i've said about my club club holds accountability fsg everyone but just like because i understand where terry's coming from if you tell me right now we've got to get rid of one of them i'm getting rid of fsg i'm not getting rid of club like that's the thing so if we get proper recruitment in place for example us buying endo wouldn't have been a thing so I'll use my club as an example. If mm. we get proper recruitment in place, we sign a centre-back, we sign a DM, we find people out there in, in, in Europe on the market that can help Liverpool Football Club. So for me, I understand where Terry is coming from, but at the same time, I understand where others are coming from because some of these players Ten Hag did want, so now they have to come to fruition, which even you've agreed with, like the likes of Mason Mount. So it, Mount it, now it, has to perform exactly. or Ten Hag has to answer. And, and Maradon simple. here says, Terry, you back the manager? Yeah, and I'll criticise him if his signings don't work, but that doesn't mean he shouldn't be allowed to buy more. It's not just you get one. So again, unless we imply this logic to all managers, one dud, you're out. <laughs> or one dud and you're you, the manager has a transfer ban. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. Equally, only one third of that money spent that Sky Sports showed has been purchased by Ten Hag. So again, I'm not going to judge Ten Hag on the overall quality of a squad that he has only built one third of in terms of the total spend. He, we have to get to a time where they put that graphic up and between 90 to 100% of that money has been spent by the manager. Then I can hold him fully to account for how that squad performs. Fully. Like we do with Pep. The thing that like spent the do, most money like right now is Chelsea, short term. Yes. Oh, I agree. I agree. Uh, I totally agree with that. Uh, Terry, you want fans to be patient, but we're watching Chilwell at left wing. Uh, Chilwell left back. Galadog, Galadog. Okay. Galadog, Galadog still in the squad. Poch is a disgrace. Should have got Nagelsmann. 
answer Terry, that. I just want to ask you something for your answer. Do you understand where I've been coming from last two weeks now? Do you understand that I'm not making this shit up? You see right no, here. I, 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 I get you there's loads and I'm not going to have patience. It's impossible. it's impossible to get them to be patient. How, how would you expect them to be patient? This is 20 years of their life. They've not been patient. And now they're supposed to be patient. Mm. This is the yeah, thing. No, so look at I him. Agree. He's asking the same stuff. So chill well left wing. Gallagher's still in the team. Blah, blah, blah. It's just so expected of a Chelsea fan to ask this question. Mm -hmm. uh, Terry has never called out Ten Hag. Absolutely ridiculous. Again, rivals never show up. The one thing, unless we lose, we, and then you'd have seen it, rivals don't show up to Man United match reactions. Even when we win, I criticize things Ten Hag does. So again, uh, you're absolutely lying there, Solution. Watch more of my content. Uh, Terry is the most honest pundit uh, on YouTube. Calls it as it is. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that.